it has to happen, it has to happen. You know, if it's the right fight, I think those guys are willing to fight it. But yeah. there's, you know, there's going to be opportunities, and, and Matthew factors into a lot of possibilities. Obviously, Sturm wants a rematch. But not really. Not really no. Well, he says he wants a rematch, he he but he's to. fighting. A, you know, a how many things have you said you actually need? Well, you know, okay, we we'll promote it. But um, he, he, Stone wants the rematch. The rematch happens. Yeah, he yeah. promotes himself. But, he, but, but, but also, he, he, I'll tell you this: he may not want the rematch, but he wants to come over and fight in the states. So, um, obviously, Matthew, that rematch is a possibility. If if uh, Manfredo were to beat um, Chavez Jr., that's a possibility. Daniel Gale is a possibility. Well, Gary wants to bring more. Right. Lee's a possibility, and of course Sergio's a possibility. If you do Sergio in, uh, you know, in the garden or in a major East Coast sort of venue near a big Irish community around St. Paddy's Day, then you have a big event. And uh, clearly Matthew's performance against Sturm, and basically if you look at his career, it sort of warrants that opportunity. And, and that's one of the reasons why we're working together, and also because I know that he has a natural base in New York that has to be built. And that's part of it. And Epic's... Um, the fight is, in December is going to be in New York, right? In all likelihood in New York. If it's not in New York, it could be in, in Foxwoods or Mohegan. It'll be in a heavily Irish area. Ideally in New York, but it's sort of in, in December there are issues with Christmas and you know, availability. Is there a date for that fight yet? It's not said we're meeting, you know, we'll be meeting with Epics to try to nail that down the next week or two. Um, but obviously they were, they were thrilled with the Sturm Macklin fight and that fight repeated on MSG Network a large number it's, of times. It's on a point. It's still going. It's still yeah, it's, being, it's running the way John Duddy fights used to run. So people are seeing that fight, and, and Epix wants to continue with, with Andy, and we're working on a strategy to get something done for, for uh, December. Uh, when, when, when did you actually, like, for lack of a better word, move here? Uh, well, we, we came, I came over uh, a few weeks ago, looked at a few places, and then uh, I landed here Tuesday. Okay, so, so you're just, you're staying here for the next few years. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'll go back, do you know what I mean? Yeah, friends yeah. on family. Yeah, family. of course. You're gonna, you're, yeah, yeah. If somebody said, where do you live? You're going to say, I live in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Save is a penny earned. And Frank says, in these uncertain times, save money. How do you feel about the atmosphere in New York City? Yeah, I mean, I've been, been many times. Uh, I fought in Atlantic City and Philadelphia in 2005. So I, I ran the ball. But, um, and you have a cousin in New York, too. Yeah. Yeah, I had an uncle in Yonkers, yeah. Just be careful. Um, oh, I have a cousin also living in Queens, so it's, it's not too bad, not too lonely. And uh, yeah, no, I like New York, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, obviously, you said that you would like to have a fight with Sergio Martinez possibly later down, later down the road. Tell me, from your perspective, how do you think that fight will break down? I mean, he's on top of his game and he's the number one division, and rightly so, but uh, I do feel he's more of a junior middleweight rather than a, a full-blown middleweight. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fairly big middleweight. I'm a big puncher middleweight. I've got a very good chin. And, uh, you know, I'll throw a lot of punches. I think I'll, I'll be a, a very, even from Sergio's point of view, he, he sees it as a, a dangerous fight and a tough fight. I think I think the main thing is just getting the tactics right. I think a lot of people he brings them, he walks them onto shots. Where I think you have to be you know, have to be careful of that. Matt, how's been the reception that you've gotten since the Sturm fight? Because a lot of people here didn't know you before that fight. Yeah, well, even though you didn't get the decision, everybody had talked to was like, man, that guy got ripped off. But when I, when we come to meet Lou uh, right after the fight, um, me and my brother were in Starbucks and uh, we got so I was only getting two waters. We were up early, got two waters. And I went to pay the guy said, No, you're all right. He said, Man, you got you got ripped off in uh, <laughs> you got ripped off in Germany. I thought, Jesus, where was that? Here in, uh, in, in Manhattan. Okay. So uh, nobody gives you free stuff in Manhattan yeah. no matter who you are. Right? Yeah. So that was good. And I was just walking down the boardwalk and a guy came up to me and said, Are you Matthew Macklin? I said, Jay said, Oh, you got ripped off in Germany, blah blah blah. He said, I'm also Matthew Macklin. I didn't know what he meant for a minute. He pulls out his driver's license, his name's Matthew Macklin, he's from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds in that? So, I mean, that's I'm, another, I'm not the only one in town. That's another area you could find so, through, right? so I, yeah. yeah, but so it's, I know you wanted to get the win. Yeah. But I suppose if you're going to get a loss, is that the best way to do it where well, you I'm, lost I'm, a terrific fight that everybody thought you were? You know, I'm glad because of, initially, obviously we've done the deal, it was on whatever the TV, I think it was Sat One in Germany, and then um, Epic's come on later, and also Sky Television in uh, the UK and Ireland. So, um, you know, I'm just glad that everyone got to see it for themselves rather than you know me coming back feeling sorry for myself from Germany saying I got ripped off and everyone thinking, yeah, yeah, we've heard that before. But you know, everyone saw the fight, so everyone can make their own minds up. You know, I thought I won the fight, clearly. Um, I think everyone I did. It was, I, to, I, did the, yeah. I was on the Epic broadcast, I swear to 117. Yeah. I mean, it was a tough fight, it was a good fight, but I, I didn't think it was a particularly a close fight. 
but you know everyone's different and has their own yeah. opinions. Did what happened was sort of the concern that you guys had when you took the fight in the first place, knowing that it was going to be in Germany? Um, I mean, it was it was always a little bit of a concern, but we didn't really want to be going out there moaning no, about it, making it too much. No, it was just, in, your mind, in, it was your just in the mind. Yeah, that's why. I mean, I set a fast pace and I was throwing lots of punches because I felt that I needed to be winning the rounds big to make sure I was getting them. I thought any close rounds, he might get them. So, you know, maybe there was times when I was probably a bit more gung ho than perhaps I might have been had it not been in Germany. But I was. It was very much in my mind that you know if he hits me once, I'm going to hit him three times. If he hits me twice, I'm going to hit him five, six times. So that was always built into my mind. When you when, when you fight here, how many people, and Brian, you might know this also, how many people do you expect to travel from uh, you know Ireland? Because the people, the biggest thing was when Ricky Hatton from yeah. Ireland fight here, and they would bring thousands. And well, thousands I, su I suppose it depends on the magnitude of the fight to how many come if out. If it was Sergio, let's say. Or I mean, if it's, Serge, if, it's, if it's Sergio or a rematch with Stone, I'll be expecting big numbers. I mean, if it's a, a 10 round uh, in a small venue in Manhattan, then mm -hmm. against someone that we don't really know, then obviously not so much. But if it's a big, if it's a big world title fight, then. There'll be, there'll be a big following coming over. I mean, his first fight, uh, life fight, is likely to be, um, you know, some top 10, 12 kind of guy. I mean, not nothing huge. Money's not huge. It's more an exposure, and, and a, you know, and I think that uh, Epix understands that this guy can become a star. I mean, they've, he's being used by Sky on, to help him out on the announce team tonight, I believe. They asked, my, you know, asked us about that. Um, obviously, he's, this is an extremely well-spoken kid, good-looking, you know, I mean, fun to hang out with. He, he, he goes over very big in every Irish pub in New York that he walks into, and they already know him. Um, That's because I don't share his. <laughs> <laughs> but they know him, and frankly, it makes a big difference to go in and meet these people. And that's how, you know, the McLaughlins worked with, with Duddy when Duddy was picking up. Because Duddy, frankly, back then wasn't the kind of kid that really liked to go to, to you know, he, he had his own little haunt, and he was with his girlfriend, and he really didn't like to bop around and meet people. The McLaughlins did a lot of that for him. You know, one of the things Matthew has a close friend, Brian Peters, who's my, where's Brian? There he is. Um, our partner from from Ireland. Um, you know, he has a close friend in New York that owns 17, or is it how many clubs? Yeah, it's a good few 17 club, you know, bars and, and Irish clubs, and, and uh, you know, he was circulating through all of those. So we expect, and you know, a, a very, you know, very strong crowd for his first fight here. And uh, well, even back to the days like you know Jerry Cooney and any anyone. Any good Irish fighters always the Irish, Irish people like a fighting man. They like boxing, boxing. They've obviously, the, their guys. the Gaelic games of the national sports, but boxing would be high up there. So they've always been well supported over the years. And obviously, like you said, you know, you know other fighters coming over. Barry when Barry McGuigan came over, and you know, even you know, they've always had a big following. So what do you think uh, when you look at the division? Sergio is the champion. He fights tonight. You know that would I assume be your goal to, to land that kind of opportunity, but. You know, it's it's not a star-studded division, but there's talented guys. Whether it's Andy Bryan winner or it's you know Sturm again, or yeah. you know, there's other guys. There's I, uh, I think I mean you know, here in town. I think there's a lot of good fighters in the middleweight division. What he probably doesn't lack, yeah, what he lacks a little bit of is marquee names. But uh, I think talent-wise, there's um, you know you could look at it. And you could think nearly a year or two down the line, it could be one of the maybe the best divisions. Just need guys to kind of establish themselves a bit more. But I think uh, Sturm was well established. He, he would have kind of would have been thought of that he was number two only to Sergio. Um, so I went over there and everyone's seen the fight. So I think I proved myself to be one of the best middleweights in the world. So you know, I thought with Sergio was something that, that I'd love here, definitely. How legit do you think that is? You know, will HBO go for that? Yeah, I believe so. I think one of the reasons why also I, mean, I want him to get another television exposure before uh, attempting to make that fight. I mean, and, and maybe two. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll see what presents itself. I mean, uh, you know. We'll see what presents itself, but obviously he's going to get a major fight at middleweight. It's going to be fairly quick. Um, but I do think it's important. We're very happy that Epix has supported Matthew, and and and, uh, and um, you know there's a likelihood again is if it's on Epix, it probably will get a delay on MSG, and, and a lot of people will see it, and and that's the that's the aim, you know, to put Matthew in front of as many people as possible. And, um, it's, and it's good that Sky, Tele Sky Television, you know, televised <coughs> the fight in Germany, and hopefully they'll. Continue to do so here, so I can keep the support up in Ireland and the UK and across Europe as well. You don't want to lose you lose that either, because and we have a very strong relationship. You know, now now Frank Warren started his own network in, in the UK. Sky is going to be looking for programming that's uh, of importance and imp you know interest in, in in the UK. Matthew obviously is well very very. You've been on Sky a bunch of times, right? Yeah, my whole my whole career. I, I mean, of course, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and you know, I've already spoken to Matchroom and, and Eddie, you know, Eddie Hearn and, and, and Barry about you know helping us out in the UK if necessary, and and we you know he will be televising UK and in Ireland, 
when he fights, including uh, his first fight. But but my my real desire is to get him in front of of uh, you know the Amer American crowd, get him in front of an Irish crowd, build a following in New York, because frankly we need to do that. Yeah, what two said Barker wins the title. Yeah, he's a that would be yeah. a huge fight over in the UK. That would be a huge yeah. fight. That would be a huge fight. And for that type of fight, there's an definitely a chance that that you know obviously we have a rematch clause on Barker, but <coughs> there's also a chance that for that kind of fight, if the deal is pre-made, that Matthew could fight Barker. Uh, in between with the winner fighting Sergio. Um, is your rematch clause with Barker immediate, or does he have an option to do one in between? Um, I'm guessing that knowing myself, it's immediate. <laughs> but that doesn't mean necessarily it has to be done that way. But, you know, um, because clearly Barker and Barker and, and, and Matthew in, in, in England, if Barker were to upset Sergio, would be a, a huge fight. God willing, I don't have to worry about that. But you know, I mean, Matthew's a really, uh, Barker's a real fighter. I'm not, I'm not walking in tonight thinking that it's a fait accompli. I've, I've been around this business too long. Now, when you sit there and you watch the fight unfold tonight, knowing that there's a reasonable chance that you may fight the winner, you know, because it's Martinez, yeah. and you're sitting in your seat and you're just checking it out, what kind of things do you look for? I mean, you're obviously scouting it. Yeah, yeah, of course. What are you, what are you looking for? Other than, you know, you're going to enjoy the fight like as a fan, but. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean. Technically, tactically, you can always analyze a fighter on video, but I think when you're up close, you can get more of a gauge of their speed and their power, which is not always that clear. It's always not a, as easy to sort of gauge that on, on, a, on a DVD, mm -hmm. but when you're up there live and you're only a few feet away, you, know, you, you can get a bit more of a feel of does he, how quick he is, how, how, how his reflexes are like, how quick he's reacting to things, and also you, you know facial expressions, his body language. He tired at, was he tiring at the end of the round? Was he, was he hurt with that? I think things like that I try and pick more so when I'm watching the fight live. And then, because technically and tactics wise, you can, and, and mistakes and patterns and habits, you can pick that up, you know, by watching hours and hours of DVDs. So you just file whatever you see in your mind? Yeah, I try and look, look at things more like to see if shots hurt him or if they look like they're tiring or, you know, how they look really quick or, you know, things like that. I mean, it's, a, it's interesting, but when we sat down, the of all the fighters I've talked to that have indicated an interest in fighting surgery, which of course are limited, um, but he's uh, he's probably presented the most cogent plan of how he, you know, he's really broken him down already, I mean, to some extent, and fig has an idea of how he thinks he has to fight him. I mean, one of the things he said, and it's not a secret, he said it earlier for a second, is that when you come to Sergio Martinez, you know, you have to be very careful. Yeah, you might yeah. think you might think you're backing him up and you're doing well, but maybe he he's not you. backing him. He's, he's trying to walk you onto something. So I think, I mean, if I thought he might, obviously you'd, you'd come up with plan A, plan B, plan C. But at a, at a, just off the top of my head, I think that I, I don't think I necessarily try and pressure him too much. I probably just try and hold the centre of the ring and let him come to me you know? and try and hit him as he comes. I don't know, sir. Just said hello at the never, press conference. That was it. Okay, no, so I don't know. Like, no, no, they'll meet tonight. They met, but they'll meet. You know, and, and look, there are two guys that. Just they're going to have respect for, mm -hmm. for each other. That's who they are. So, you know, they're going to meet. They're going to like each other, and they're going to try to kill each other if they fight. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, okay. um, you know, I think that that one of the things also that attracted me to Matthew is when you look across the landscape of the world right now in terms of who are exciting fighters. You know, he has to make a list. I mean, he's just an exciting guy. He likes to rumble. He bleeds too much. He gets hit too much for himself, for his own good. But he he is a high pressure fighter. He's got skills. He can move. He could do everything, but he's the last thing he is is a runner, and um, and, I, and there are so many fights with him that can be made right now, even in a in a mediocre uh, middleweight division, where I think below, below the very top, it's it's needs to be developed. I think some of what he said about there are guys there, you know, down the line, and I say down the line, a Pierog or a Peter Quillen, particularly if they fight each other. I mean, if someone we have to weed through to create fights that mean something. You have a crop of 54s that are going to come up, too. Exactly. Yeah. And then those guys, when they come up, you're going to have a vision that's reinvigorated. And, and, um, and he building a market in the meantime, possibly getting the, the big, big fight in March. But, you know, he's going to get a big fight very soon, even if it's not Sergio. I mean, there are so many other possibilities. And, uh, and he's on the short list of the top of the division. I mean, who, who is there? I mean, there's, you know, you can make a very strong argument. He's number two right now at 160. Um, I mean, at the worst, he's three, I would think, right? I know, so. I mean, that's right. So, um, you know, it's a good time for, for Matthew, and I think that also I'm very impressed by when I talk to Matthew, when I talk to Brian, the understanding and the willingness of, of building a following in America, building, to making use of the fact that, you know, that whole little, little area between New York City and Boston 
is riddled with you know Irish Americans, and if you go to the Bronx and Queens, there are parts of it that are friggin' Ireland, and you know um, it's why Duddy was able to be such a star, why his fights are still replayed on MSG Network, and and one of the reasons why well the Matthew Macklin uh, Stern fight was sensational, but they're replaying that every week, and part of it is that there's an Irish contingent that'll watch it more than <laughs> once, so um, it wasn't the worst fight to watch. <laughs> no, it was a terrific fight to watch, and the other thing is there are fights I can make for him. You know, I mean, uh, you know, his first fight in the states. There's not going to be a huge budget, and it's not going to be. You know, the idea is to it's going to be to put sell out a smaller venue or a mid-sized venue, not put him in some big venue. And you know, the idea is to bring in a, a crowd and to develop a crowd. But there are guys in there because of his style of fighting that you just can't have a bad fight. Guys that he's cl has more class than. Where do you want to have him? I mean, it possibly the Beacon Theater would be a perfect place. The problem with the Beacon Theater is the holidays. Um, but we, we've been looking at the Beacon Theater, theater as a possibility. That's where, it's like 54th Street or something? It's on Broadway and 74th Street. Um, the Garden has expressed interest in doing, you know, Matthew's fight in a smaller venue, but again, it's... it's in the theater? Yeah, potentially. And then also you have Foxwoods and, and Mohegan Sun as possibilities, um, you know, uh, mid-sized venues in Boston. I mean, we're going to look at any place, but, but really our desire is to fight in New York. I mean, our desire is to fight in New York, and, and, and I think that's what we're going to really try to do. And we could even get super creative if the Garden doesn't have availability and do something like the Apollo Theater or some other venue that has, you know, pizzazz, but um, it is more of a mid-size or smaller venue. And, you know, like I said, matchmaking, there's certain guys that styles make it very easy to matchmake, where you can take a guy that may not be of the class of Matthew, and Matthew's not going to be able to help himself. It's going to be a brawl for a while until he asserts himself and takes control. So, um, you know. He knows you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were sitting in a bar the other night, and he was talking to a lovely blonde waitress while he was showing her pictures of his various faces after, the, the, or might call them masks, after fights he won. Yeah, yeah. And the girl's going, you won that fight? He's like, quite easily. <laughs> I mean, you know, but, you know, he likes the rumble. He's a fun fighter. I mean, and that's frankly what people are responding to right now. This is not the right time to dance backwards. It just isn't. You know, fighters that are doing that are, are, are not really endearing themselves to the public. This is the entertainment business. I, one of the reasons I want to work for him is not only because I thought he had a great market, not only because I know I could work with Brian, but because his style is entertaining. He doesn't make bad fights. You know, there are so many fights you can make with him that are going to be fun. And, um, you know, a Lee Vera winner against Macklin is just a fun fight. It's just a fun fight. And Sturm, if Sturm ever got over here again, and we can get him to do that and make that fight over here, you know, that's just a fun fight. You pair it with the right fight, and, and you put it in the right venue, and, and it's a great fight. Um, the idea of an eliminator with one of these big names, you know, or, or a unification, if he were to beat Sturm, obviously a fight with, with, with Serge is unifying the ring belt, the best middleweight in the world, with, with uh, you know, another belt. I mean, my, Daniel Gill. Um, comes over here, and, and frankly, I think Gary's got to do sort of, I know that Gary's talking about doing the same thing, bringing Gale over here and letting people see him. Um, because in the middleweight division, if a Gale and a Macklin fight, and Ma you know, the winner of that fight against Martinez, if Martinez gets past Barker, if he keeps winning, it becomes a very big fight. And, and that's what we have to do, because it's going to be very, very difficult to make fights for um, Sergio or Matthew or any of these guys with, the, you know, with the Cotos or the Margaritos or, you know, anybody like that. Well, you know those aren't that. Exactly. So that's why I'm attempting to make, in effect, you know, matchups that lead to top-notch middleweight opposition for the title of the pound-for-pound -pound middleweight champion, the best middleweight in the world. And I think that, you know, I was very impressed with the storm fight. I was watching it like you were, and, and um, you know, there was an immediate Twitter reaction that I was part of, and it was almost unanimous, you know, how that was just an outrageous score. How do you, how, how do you have that fight for Sturm? I mean, I, I've watched that fight, I, don't, I mean, I've watched it literally 20 times, and I, even if I'm trying to give rounds to Sturm, I couldn't give him more than four. So, you know, I, I, I thought when the decision came out that in the back of my head, this is Germany. But I also thought that I want to work with Matthew Macklin either way, and that's the first thing I did when I called Brian. I said, I don't care about the loss, I want to work with you and Matt, you know. And, um, and I think that he's going to have his death. And I think, you know, I, I think he'll give anyone hell, including for Sergio. I mean, there's, there are differences in styles, but I think his pressure and, you know, it's not fun to fight a guy who's on your chest and on your face the whole fight. And, and that's how he fights. Any questions from anybody? Other than can we go change? <laughs> But that's pretty much it, and I think that, that you, you know, you can look for a fight in December. 
in all probability on epics. And epics has been very supportive of, of Matt, you know, doing the Stern fight, but also since the Stern fight, the you know the ex executives up there feel that Matt won the fight. Maybe on a Friday night. Well, but, you know, we're going to have to try to be creative. I got to talk to them. But, you know, I think Saturday would be the ideal, but there is obviously competition on Saturdays in December. Um, there's also some very good European fights occurring uh, that can be taped, and and epics can set up a whole weekend of boxing or a night of boxing that involves some of those fights.